you know, back in the 1920s, there was a whole slew of American writers who ended up as expatriates in Paris, Hemingway among them, and, uh, the, and who wrote The Great Gatsby. Fitzgerald, yes, and then a variety of others. It was very inexpensive in Paris at the time, and part of their transformation into great literary figures was the fact that they were out of their country, and now they could see what their country was, because you can't see what your country is until you leave it. So you have to go into the unknown, and that's, that's God's first command. Go into the unknown, because you already know what you know. And so, and that's not enough, unless you think you're enough. And if you're not enough, and you don't think you're enough, then you have to go where you haven't been. Get away from your family enough so that you can establish your independence. And that isn't because there's something wrong with your family, although perhaps there is, you know, as there is perhaps wrong with you. But it means get away. You know, I talk to people very frequently whose families have provided them with too much protection. And they know it themselves, and that means they're deprived of necessity. You know, one of the things that you see in, in, in the United States, for example, is that um, the children of first-generation immigrants often do better than, the chil than, the, than their children. And the reason for that is that the children of first-generation Im immigrants have necessity driving them. And you don't know how much you need necessity to drive you because maybe you're not very disciplined. And if a catastrophe doesn't immediately befall you if you don't act forthrightly today, then maybe you never act forthrightly, right? Because the, the, the gap between your foolishness and the punishment is, is lengthened by your unearned wealth, and so you never grow up and learn, and you have to get yourself away from your dependency in order to allow necessity to drive you forward. And that's to become independent and to become mature. And I think part of what's happening in our culture is that the, the, the force that's attacking the, the forthright movement forward of young men in particular is afraid of the power of men because it's confused about the distinction between power and authority and competence. Like, a man who's, who has authority and competence has power as a byproduct, but the authority and competence is everything. And, and, and people who can't understand that fail to make the distinction between power and authority and competence, and they're afraid of power, and so they destroy authority and competence. And that's a terrible thing, because we need authority and competence. What else is going to allow us to prevail in the long run? I've been struck very hard by a number of writers, Carl Jung obviously among them. I mean, he, he wrote things like Nietzsche that, if you understand them, they just break you into pieces, you know? And, and one of the things that Jung understood and the psychoanalysts understand, it's one of the most terrifying elements of psychoanalytic thinking. It's very tightly allied with religious thinking, which is that you are not the master of your own house. There are spirits that dwell in you, within you, meaning you have a will and you can exercise a certain amount of conscious control over your being, but there are all sorts of things that occur within you that seem to be beyond your capacity to control. Your dreams, for example, that's a really good example, or your impulses, for example, you might, you might think of those as so foreign from you that they're not even, you don't even want them to be part of you. But, but more subtly even, how about what you're interested in, what compels you? Like, where does that come from? And so, there's a calling in you towards what you're compelled by and what you're interested in, and sometimes that might be very dark, and sometimes not. But you're compelled forward by your interest, and if you don't listen to it, that's the other thing. If you don't listen to it, and I've been a clinician and talked to enough people now, as old as I am, to know this absolutely. If you do not listen to that thing that beckons you forward, you will pay for it like you cannot possibly imagine. You'll have everything that's terrible about life in your life and nothing about it that's good. And worse, you'll know that it was your fault and that you squandered what you could have had.